Hi. It's been a while. He missed you. <sighs> didn't you miss him? I didn't throw anything at him yet. Well, it wouldn't hit him. You're a few states away. I could try. It would probably just bounce and hit you back in the face. Mm. We shall see. So, how are you doing tonight? I'm okay. I had the weekend off, which was nice. Tried to talk the boyfriend into seeing Thor 2 again, but he said no. What, he wanted to see it again? I wanted to see it again. Oh, you wanted to see it again. He did not because he's totally jealous of all the pretty boys from Marvel. Marvel, <laughs> not Marvel. He was especially jealous of the awesome cameo. Or maybe it's we just spent $20 watching. I'm it. just going to pay. <laughs> I said I would treat. I don't know if do the same movie again. I know I got to go with him on this one because, you know, you go to say, I want to go see a new movie. It was a really good movie. <laughs> well, this weekend, I'm making him take me to see the Hunger Games. Oh, you're making him. Yeah. Uh... So this week, the fir very first story we're getting. Oh, my. This is. Don't you have to do the intro? Yeah, let me get that. I'm trying to sum up this week and I'm not having a good time of it because we got a broad spectrum of nonsense. It's a smorgasbord of nonsense. A veritable cornucopia. Who came up with the word smorgasbord? It's an awful word. Oh, wait, that, there you There's the right one. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like crazy. to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You. Okay. I'm crazy for Just last week, we had yet another building shaped like a dick. This seems to be a thing that happens a lot. There are dicks, dick buildings, quite often. I think I know where we're going. For the very first time, we have not a dick building. We have... <sighs> it's a vagina. It's it's a it's a vagina. And it's about damn time. Let's put I, some quality up in this shit. It's that is a it's a fucking vagina. Uh Kedar Stadium. Wait, is it? Because as the owner of a vagina, I'm here to tell you it doesn't look much like that. Like that might be a vagina with an STD. <laughs> Okay, let's read what the article says. The uh, design critics, it looks like a vagina. Um, Matt Cabe has noted the $120 billion project bears little resemblance to an ancient dough boat. That's what they called it. It was supposed to be a boat, D-H-O-W, that uh, they traditionally use for pearl diving. Um, I, it, that's, yeah. It's well, got the you know, opening, and then there's the wings, well, and there's the top, and doesn't have a clit. Definitely missing that. It's, I mean, have these guys ever seen a vagina? Because it doesn't look like that. Just, okay, here's the thing. Everything with the vaguely round opening is not a vagina. Well, everything that's, you know, cylindrical and long is not a dick. That building was totally a dick. That, okay, that building was totally, because it wasn't uh, cylindrical. It, 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 
It had, it was a dick. That was a dick. There, there was no, that was a fucking dick. I mean, I guess, you know, with the size of the, oh, the shape of the opening, but everything else around it, I, I don't. It's also ridiculously ugly as a building. It doesn't seem particularly efficient. Because it, what? I don't okay, let's let's put the genitalia aside for a second. Who thought this was a good design? Why is it ribbed? I I we're all just sitting here scratching our heads trying to figure out what the hell. Really, what it looks like is some kind of deformed clam. <laughs> well, that just brings it back around again, doesn't it? Excuse me? This, that is one of the slang ter- There you go, see, people in the channel are. See? Clam, vagina, vagina. I've never heard it called that. You've anybody- never heard it called a clam before? No, and anybody who did call it that in my presence would quickly have an awful lot of pain in their genitalia. Never heard that. No. You know, I, I would thought that all the the potential slang terms for genitalia you would have been well versed in. Thank you. <laughs> We've been in the camp for how damn long? They do not all call it that in New England. I have never heard that term. <laughs> I've heard it. it's called a taco. That's another one. I have heard that term. You've heard that one. See. Well, let's get back to something a little more normal for us. Kind of. That's saying a lot. Somebody just called me sheltered. <laughs> Yay. You don't watch this show very often. So this is Florida yet again. And of all the places to do this, I think this is probably not even in terms of offensiveness, just in in, in terms of I'm baffled by it. This is probably the, 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 the most really you got it. You got an erection here. Man masturbated at DMV office. That's possibly the least sexy place in the world. That's what I'm saying. Except for maybe your local IRS. Off-duty cop intervened when a man started masturbating in the lobby of a suburban West Palm Beach DMV office. Edward Michael Alvin, 34, exposed himself at about 11 a.m. Friday to several people in the lobby of the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. Uh, off-duty police officer was also at the office, told Alvin to stop masturbating. Sir, I'm going to need you to stop playing with yourself. Would you please cease choking the chicken at this time? What are you trying to accomplish there? They're not going to move you to the front of the line. <laughs> no! Alvin was also arrested. He, yeah, Alvin ignored the order. That's well, gut. That once he got a good rhythm going. <laughs> that's gutsy, though. When a cop tells you to stop doing something, regardless, that's like, nope. He was arrested in July for. Uh, in that case, he was accused of stealing his boss's former car, crashing it while intoxicated. You don't say. Uh, he was booked in the ba- Palm County Beach Jail on a charge of indecent exposure. <sighs> I don't know how one even sustains an erection in the DMV, to be honest. It seems like it's the anti-Viagra, you know? That's a really, really specific fetish. Yeah, I know. It's like everybody's got a fetish, but really the DMV. The DMV, dude. I mean, to be so into pain and suffering. 
Daver, oh my god. So this man failed to yield? Yeah! <laughs> that's pretty awesome. That That's pretty awesome. Uh... To be fair, the DMV is full of jerk-offs. It's lightsaber, Mario. What's one more? Honestly, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I suppose you could say he hit a speed bump. Hmm. Poorly delivered. <laughs> Sir, that's not a gear shift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's not how you drive stick no, at all. No. No. And the boyfriend keeps trying to teach me how to drive stick because he has a manual shift car. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you. I've had people say, you need to learn how. You need to know how. And I'm like, why? Why? It's 2013. They make automatic transmissions now. This is what I keep trying to tell him. He's like, this is the skill that you need. And I'm like, no, I don't. Kind of like I don't need to know how to send smoke signals because we have phones now. <laughs> I, they don't even make manual transmission electric cars, do they? I don't think they do. I think so. So, yeah. I think we got way off the subject of a guy jerking off the DMV. I think we tried to get way off the subject. Yeah. So, how about that local sports team? <laughs> well, we, we've got a lot of people these days complaining about government. Too much government. Government's awful. Hey, government. Get the government out of my Medicare. Yeah. And sometimes this is not really warranted, but sometimes they kind of bring it on themselves. And this is one of those times. This comes to us. Uh, where, where is this one from? Yeah, this is from the New York Daily News. Uh, Aaron summoned for jury duty. I have. Did they check? But I didn't actually when I called, I didn't have to go. Did they at least check to make sure you were eligible? Well, I actually did get summoned for jury duty on at my parents' house on Long Island. And my mother had to call them and tell them, like, she hasn't lived here in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, well, no, not every time. I think uh, Sal Esposito has a better excuse than you did. Mainly by virtue of the fact that he is a cat. Don't they do it by voter registration? Census information, actually. Boston resident Sal Esposito has been called to jury duty, but there's one standing thing standing in the way of his ability to serve. He's a cat. Massachusetts couple Anna and Guy Esposito received a jury duty summons for their feline friend um, who had listed him as a household resident on the 2010 census. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sal, well, okay. they did list him under pets. All right, okay, I thought, like under children, and I'm like, no. Look. Sal is a member of the family, so I listed him in the last census form under pets. But there was clearly a misstep. I read the whole thing and said, "My God, how could he go? He's a cat." Anna filed to have her pet disqualified from the service requirements on the grounds that he is quote unable to speak and understand English. You always skip the best part. What is the best part? I was shocked, added Anna's husband, Guy, though he said Sal, a fan of crime shows, knows right and wrong. <laughs> they, uh, they even include a letter from the vet explaining Sal is not a human being, but a, quote, domestic, short-haired, neutered feline. Court rejected the request and things stand... Sal will have to report to duty to Suffolk Superior Crown Court in Boston on March 23rd. What if there's no litter box in the courtroom? That would be a catastrophe. Like, are you leaving? I can't actually see you. Your picture never loaded. No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no! It's just, it's no! That, that, no! That was so bad, the milk in my house just spoiled. That's how bad that was. <laughs> that would, no! Uh, no. You know who would be the best juror ever? Grumpy Cat. He's got that like Wilford Brimley, Perry Mason face. You'd just be like, no. I, I can't even do it. What are we doing? 12 Angry Kitties? What the fuck? That would be amazing. Although, I mean, you'd be totally fucked. Cats have no mercy. Cats have no mercy. They'd be Cats. like, guilty. Cats have no higher reasoning. Oh, you have no idea. You have no idea how smart cats are. Cats are able, cats are smart enough to vindictive, to be vindictive. My sister, yeah. when we were kids, had a cat named Cubby, who was the meanest cat in the world. Really mean cat. And the only people in the world she liked were my sister Nancy and my mom. But even then, when she would get mad at Nancy, she would wait. Like, if Nancy did anything to make this cat mad, this cat would wait until Nancy went to bed, would crawl under the bed right under where her pillow was and just purr really, really, really loudly all night. So she couldn't sleep. And yes, this was also the one that used to pee in the burners of the stove when she had kidney failure. I don't understand the appeal of a pet that understands spite. How can you not understand the appeal of that? The thing, the, the way I explain it, uh, my boss is a dog person and I am, uh, I like dogs. I like dogs very much, but ultimately I am a cat person. And she's like, but dogs need you and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, exactly. Dogs need you. They love you because they need you because they can't poop without your assistance. <laughs> they, they need you. Cats don't need you. Cats are like, fuck you, thumbs. I got this. So if a cat loves you, you know that love is real. <laughs> That's not love based on desperation. That's real love. Well, I wouldn't say it's dogs being desperate so much as they love everything. Well, that too, they're also stupid. Yeah, they're about dumb as hell. They love everything. If you can earn the love of a cat, you are a worthy being. So you're saying this is the, suddenly this this is why this cat is the ultimate juror. If you yes. can, if you, if can, you can win over this cat, you're good. That oddly makes a weird kind of sense. Right? Jury should be all cats by now. So we have something completely. This is weird. This comes from England, which I'm surprised because this is one of those moments in life where you stop and you go, my God, how did I get here? This is not my beautiful house. And, not my beautiful wife. And but this is a fire extinguisher hose shoved up my ass. Hotel guest emerged naked from a storage cupboard of a premier inn with a fire extinguisher hose shoved up his bottom. Joseph Small, 20, stripped off and garbed in the appliance on the fourth floor corridor and grabbed the appliance. He then put the hose between his buttocks and began touching himself. Small also urinated on the carpet before a hotel worker wrapped him in a towel and escorted him down to reception. He then hurled abuse at the Bangladeshi member of the staff, telling him, this country has been taken over by Al-Qaeda. Go back to Pakistan. In the lobby, Small again urinated in front of tourists, shouting, quote, I come from Sheffield in England. He caused 450 pounds worth of damage. I have a question. While they were shuffling him around, was he dragging the fire? <laughs> this time, like a really elaborate tale? <laughs> you know, I as horrible as this event was, my first impulse would be to go over and pull the pin on that fucking fire extinguisher. That's what my other question is. Does anybody think to pull the trigger? Because that would have really ended this entire kerfuffle really damn quick yeah 
probably. I mean, <laughs> okay. maybe not the racist slurs, because he probably would have been shouting some pretty colorful things. <laughs> Fire the asshole. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was a good one. And uh, what was it? Who had the one that I, it was, it's kind of obvious, but Divine all had the aristocrats. <laughs> uh. I mean, they make toys specially designed for that, that don't shoot volatile foam. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them don't even shoot foam. Some of them shoot this white dust crap, which yeah. you don't want that anywhere near. And also, that's almost guaranteed not to be sterile. <laughs> and I am generally against putting things that are not sterile anywhere internal. I love how proud I mean, you look. I guess I shouldn't say that because everybody eats food and food yeah. is obviously not that's sterile. Fair. But in general... <clears throat> Besides, like, food and the occasional Q-tip, I think it's a bad idea to put anything not sterile inside your person. Particularly a fire extinguisher. Particularly things that shoot projectile, yeah. But I love how proud he was of this. I'm from Sheffield. I come from Sheffield in England and I have a fire extinguisher up my butt. You know what's funny? He probably doesn't come from Sheffield. He, prob he probably comes from whatever city has a really elaborate soccer rivalry with Sheffield. <laughs> and this was all, in a, and you know, once he realized the situation he was in, just decided to make his rival team look like assholes. You, uh, Manchester. He pr so you're, what you're, the Everybody in Channel's going, he comes from Manchester. There you go. He's a Manchester United fan. Out for a good time, got backed into a corner, is like, fuck it, I'm from Sheffield, bitches. <laughs> I know if I got caught in a hotel urinating in public with a fire extinguisher up my ass, I would say I was a Yankee fan. Yeah. Just yeah, just have that in case. Yeah. Keep that in case of like He's like Derek Jeter, what? So science is amazing. I like science. I'm a big fan of science. But there are some times when science makes me sad. And I think particularly literally when science makes me sad. This is one of those you're this guy is going to be kicking himself forever. He's he officially has put himself in the history books for one of the worst things to have possibly done in the in the field of science. Scientist dates world oldest animal at 507 years after they accidentally kill it. Researchers at Bangor University have identified the world's oldest animal, a 507 year old bivalve mollusk um, named Ming. Alas, although Ming survived countless wars and fashion trends, could not survive the research process. It died when scientists pried it open to discover its age. Who named it? Uh -huh. Ming was located in 2006 as a part of an expedition to, I to Iceland. Uh, researchers unaware of its age or significance accidentally killed the animal when opening it to investigate its age by literally counting its rings. Time, scientists pegged Ming's age at 405, but more recent studies indicate Ming was in fact 507. Oops. Out for Ming. <clears throat> Whoops. We suck. The oldest creature. This is 507 years old. This is a creature that has lived through ages. We, we didn't even have like functioning democracy when this creature came into existence. It was not a thing in the world. We were still aristocracy all over the fucking place. We hadn't even figured out. We didn't know that there was, you know, another side of the planet and shit. We didn't have zippers. Or processed food. Or Hulu. Or penicillin. 
Ming derived its name from the Ming Dynasty in power at China. America. No, we didn't have America. It's in, in 1499. 1499. And, man, that just... They don't name the scientist in this article, I'm noticing. Didn't this happen? I thought this is this the old story or did this happen again? Because I feel like this happened a couple no, of years ago. This is this is uh this happened. I feel like somebody ate the world's oldest claim a clam a few years ago. No, but you know what did happen before? Uh and again, counting the rings. This is a real fucking thing. This really fucking happened. The world's oldest tree was killed by the scientist who was trying to determine how old it was. How tiny does a clam have to be to only have one ring? <laughs> the little. They start very, very little. They get big. Does it start as like a barnacle? Yeah. They, this clams is tiny when they start. <sighs> Humans are the worst. We just, why did... <laughs> Nature's like, great, what the fuck are you talking Monkey's gonna do next? Oh wait, apparently I'm right. Someone found a link. What? It says November 14th, 2013. 405-year-old clam called longest-lived animal, October 29th, 2007. Okay, well I guess they just finally redated it at 507. Oh, OK. So it's an even worse fuck up. So we've compounded the fuck up, essentially. I don't know why I remembered that story. I, I just I. I. It makes me sad on many. We, we just make things worse. Like that clam lived through a lot of shit. That clam lived through bell bottoms and Ugg boots and cravats and a Backstreet Boys reunion and several assassinations. We have one final story this week. And I, this is, I don't think this guy quite understands the definition of excuse, because an excuse should not make what you're doing seem worse. In which case this, this does. Also, I want to say it's sad. This guy is the same name as one of my favorite authors. Uh, yeah, I was kind of looking at that. I'm like, what? William Gibson, genital. I made this story so much better, though. Oh, God, no. William Gibson, genital fluffer, said he was just airing his penis out or airing, airing out his penis. William Gibson, 50, allegedly exposed himself outside a Goodwill store in Jensen Beach, Florida, earlier this month, then claimed he was, quote, airing out his penis. Gibson allegedly first stuck his hand down his pants and smelled his fingers before dropping his drawers. Come on! Then, according to witnesses, all of a sudden, Gibson just pulled down the front of his underwear to expose his genitals, fluffing them. You know what's sad? I think he's telling the truth. I don't know. I don't know if if dicks need airing out periodically. I don't have one, so I don't know this. But that's something that should be done in the privacy of your own home. You want to stand in front of a fan for a couple of hours? Go to town. That's great. Do it in your own home. Not outside the goodwill. That does not engender goodwill. <laughs> And don't donate. Don't even think about donating those pants. No. <laughs> oh wait, we had another. Uh, sorry, we have another one. To, I guess this is a this is another one to end us off on. And this is kind of one of those. Ha I guess this would be a happy ending in its own way. 
Um, not like that. I, I know your mind went I'm there. I'm thinking but about the Sunday from Friendlies. Well, this this is pretty good, too. This is pretty good, too. Um, from North Carolina. This is a nice little. Yeah, this is a good way to end the night. North Carolina KKK mistakenly attempt recruiting drive in Black Florida neighborhood. It's called okay, demographics. Guys, the Dave Chappelle black, blind, white supremacist thing. Not real. Yeah. That was a joke. You're not going to find that guy. North Carolina Ku Klux Klan group said it may that says that it made a mistake when it accidentally targeted a predominantly black Florida neighborhood in an attempt to recruit more members. Um, WFTV reported that residents of the new Smyrna, Smyrna, yeah, Smyrna, 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 new Smyrna beach community were shocked over the last few days to find hundreds of flyers with the words, our race is our nation and a symbol of the hood and Klansmen. You say this is a recruiting effort. However, your group just targeted a predominantly black neighborhood. Uh, Ryan Hughes told KK hate leader, Robert Jones in a telephone interview. Well, we don't have no way of judging where we're putting the flyers at, Jones explained. Or grammar. We don't have no way. Our race is our nation. Was there somebody here before white people? I can't I remember. I can't remember. Somebody that wasn't white people um, living here before white people got here? And gave them smallpox. Am I thinking of another country? I must be thinking yeah, of another yeah, country. Because, you know, white people. We're just the fucking end all be all. Demographics, for fuck's sake. Jeez. See, I think everybody in that neighborhood should join. Yeah, exactly. They all show up and like, hey, got the flyer. <laughs> the fuck clan meeting and be like hell yeah we were invited we're taking over this bitch we brought potato salad <laughs> <laughs> oh i guess yeah i guess that's the first thing we learned this week is know your audience yes it it you know, if they could go down there and, and distribute the flyers, maybe they could have figured out who they was giving the flyers to. Um, we've learned that humans are awful and we ruin everything. Yeah, but somebody brought up a good a good point that humans are also responsible for Bat Kid. So. <laughs> Sam Clown, Bat Kid. Uh, no, that's tough call. Because that back shit was pretty amazing. We learned that if you are going to put a fire extinguisher hose up your butt, you should probably sterilize it first. You don't know where that fire extinguisher hose has been. Exactly. You don't know who else has put it up their ass. This is true. Oh, God. Now, all right. You know what? Now, if there's ever a fire in public and I have to run and grab a fire extinguisher, I'm going to have to go, whoop, wait a minute. You have to think about that now. Do I want to burn alive has that, not, has that been up the ass of a man who may or may not be from Sheffield? Yeah, do I want to... Yeah, you have to think of... Do I want to burn to death or do I want to... Well, hmm. you don't have to hold hmm. the end. You can kind of choke up on the hose. <laughs> well, they don't know. It doesn't say how far he put it up his butt. True. We, we it doesn't say whether he was dragging it around the lobby, and I feel like that's an important detail. That That's a lot of clenching. Jesus. Um, We've learned that... Apparently, cats make great jurors. And a cat's love is real. <laughs> We've learned that um, the DMV is not. We There's a fetish for everyone, apparently, even like Walmart. There is nothing sexy at the DMV. Even the process of getting your picture taken is one of the least sexy things. It's like stand there, look forward. Keep looking forward. Click next. The last time I got my license renewed, actually, the guy was really nice. And he was like, you want to see the picture? You want to take it again? He was very nice about it. I just had mine done. She was not nice about it. She, I, I felt I felt violated. Well, I got a youngish, like 20 something guy. So he was pretty cool about it. 
And I guess as it's... always, we have learned yet again, as though we needed to, that no one wants to see your dick. Not the DMV, not the Goodwill. Nobody. I'm waiting for, you know, we, we keep getting hitting a certain level social strata with these. I'm waiting for the day where when someone does this sort of thing, you know, at like a governor's mansion or Macy's at the Waldorf Astoria during brunch on Sunday. I want to see somebody dragging a fucking fire extinguisher in his ass through the Waldorf Astoria. I mean, Donald Trump shows us his ass once a week, but Not the I don't same. think even he's seen his dick in years. Why are you all saying the DMV guy was hitting on me? He was just being a nice person. Sometimes people are just nice people. Mine wasn't a nice. She, she, mine's soul had been crushed. She was just like, next. We have weirdly nice people at my local DMV. Uh, it's like some kind of little pocket universe where DMV people aren't horrible. Oh, there's an ad playing. Shut up. Stop that. Sorry. Uh, I I just. Up, up your butt and then peeing on, on the carpet. Maybe they were going for some kind of fountain joke. Maybe they're just an asshole. In hose, out hose. It's like avant-garde. It's like, ow. I finally saw Sharknado and I really, really appreciated the very surrealist choice they made in not actually showing you any of the action, only showing you people reacting to the action. And just making you decide what's happening that they're reacting to. I think that was really interesting, very artful choice. <laughs> not at all motivated by a $50 budget. Yeah, it's, I suggest you in the channel says, so speaking of asshole, architects need more assholes. You know what? Everyone's got one. We need to have an asshole building because at least then we could all we could all celebrate it together. It, it, it would bring us all unity, you know. I don't know. It would remind me too much of the sky poop. Food pooping anus from Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Actually, Sume pretty pretty much nailed it. We do. It's called the Pentagon. 